Welcome back to another fictionalhead.com essential training. This series is dedicated to quick tutorials and topics which I feel are essential to understand the software we use as designers. They are less tutorials and more process and concept driven. Uh, today's topic is why blurring or feathering is super important to use in Photoshop and how it covers up or pretty much masks and gets rid of all of your errors. So if we're looking at something like a brick wall or it could be any sort of repeating pattern, be that clothing, um, uh, a ground, a wall in a photo, anything really. Um, if you were to try to do something to this and like maybe modify the tiling of it or do anything where you'd have to sort of mask chunks of a photo to other chunks of a photo. Um, and I know that that sounds kind of vague, so we'll just go at it here. So like, let's say I do something like that. <clears throat> and there's this weird seam showing up. Uh, generally, people might try to attack this by either patching or cloning or healing or doing something like that to sort of repair the seam. Um, and that's all fine and good, but really one of the best things that you can do in Photoshop to sort of hide errors like that is just take data that's good from somewhere else in your photo um, and usually try to copy too much. So I'm just going to copy this whole brick here and paste it down. I'm going to move this brick over top of the error in question. So I'm going to put it right here. Um, and now you'll see I've got kind of an even more annoying seam the whole way around. But really the key is just to go into your masks, go into um, however you prefer, but just some method that involves where blurring is available. Um, get rid of all of your extra. And then once you've got that sort of masked in like that, even if it is rough, um, you can easily in the newer versions of Photoshop, just double click your mask to get your feathering option and just blur it a little bit. And what that does is it smooths out the edges of your mask <clears throat> to blend your old data and your new data together. Um, and that tip will generally hide like 90% of the errors you have whenever you're doing this type of editing. I know on a day-to-day -day basis, I fake shoelaces and treads and things on shoes using this technique and it's super fast. Um, I edit things out of people's hands. I edit hair, things like that. And it always involves copying a chunk from a photo that's good, moving it to another area and then blending it in. Um, another example of where blurring would be super helpful, uh, I covered in another tutorial, but we'll just rehash it here, is making fake shadows, another thing that I do all the time when editing photography. So if this little guy here needed a shadow, um, instead of doing the thing where you just kind of copy his outline and then make a new layer for him or for his shadow and kind of smash it down and do this sort of thing, because that produces a very fake, um, and I would say very distinctively fake shadow that most people can tell. Um, it's really much better to just make a rough go at it with your paint brush, uh, paint kind of where you think a shadow would be. Sorry, got my brushes all mixed, mixed up. So paint kind of where you think a shadow would be. I'm going to give him a big lump for his head, kind of a thing for his tail, whatever. And then once again, blurring to the rescue, I usually use Gaussian or Gaussian, however you want to say it. Uh, it's the same thing as feathering in the sense that it blurs out from the center in all directions. Um, and really just blur that shape. It'll get rid of any sort of hint that you did a bad job drawing it. And then you can just sort of smash it down uh, in perspective to get a nice soft shadow that um, reflects the shape of your character a lot better than, say, a faked um, direct silhouette would. So again, blurring is your friend. It's super quick. It, it masks the fact that you um, edited and sort of drew a really nasty looking shape. Um, if you're doing sorts of curve and level adjustments, like say I wanted to give this guy rim lighting, I could just very quickly select him. Whoops. Modify my selection. Uh, contract it. We'll say 40 pixels. That's way too much. Um, we'll contract it 20 pixels and then just give him a level adjustment here where we brighten up the edges. I'm going to invert it so that I get the opposite. So again, I've got this really obvious at this point, 
clipped sort of bright ring around the edge. But if I just grab my brush with black, paint where I don't want it, so I'm just going to get it off of his eyeballs, get it off of the horn, and you can see how sort of sloppily I'm doing my job here. Uh, get it off the lip of his mouth there, and then maybe just get rid of it on his hand and his tail. Call it good. Um, then just go into the mask again and start feathering it. And if you get it to the point where it's high enough, you can really just watch that sort of edit disappear gracefully into your photograph. Um, and now he's got this nice rim lighting that you can turn on and off. And it took all of three seconds to do some clicks and some dirty scribbling. And it looks perfectly fine. Um, again, once you get it to this point, you can always just sort of touch up with white and black. Like maybe you want to add some highlights by the nose or by the belly. Um, it really just allows you to be sort of quick and sloppy and it makes your um, edits all that much, much more elegant because people can't pick up on them. Because once you blur them, it just sort of gets nice and artistic and it avoids that really rough clipping that you see that usually automatically detects for people um, obvious Photoshop work has been done. So again, blurring and feathering is super important. You should probably use it hundreds of times a day if you're doing this sorts of editing. Um, and then again here, uh, I picked brick again just because it's very obvious to tell when brick is and is not um, tiling correctly. Uh, but say you were doing some sort of edit where you're trying to get rid of this window, you might be inclined to try to patch or clone or something it out. It's usually easier just to grab a chunk from the photo where uh, everything is going as you wish. So like this chunk of brick, we'll just paste it in, move it over, <clears throat> get some sort of rough alignment lined up here correctly. So I'm just kind of looking at this edge and you can see a lot of the bricks are more or less lined up a little bit off because of the perspective, but we'll just call that good right around there. So again, I've introduced a seam here, which you might be inclined again to clone or do whatever but it really is easiest to just throw on a layer mask, grab a black brush. <clears throat> um, and I'm talking very basic black brush because the blurring is going to take care of everything. So just a hard pixel brush. Uh, and I'm just going to go down the brick here and just sort of scribble it away in an erratic way. Because the human eye is really good at picking up on changes if they're all very linear and in a very similar spot. But as soon as you introduce some variation of where the edit is occurring, it gets really hard for humans to sort of quickly pick up on where the edit is occurring. So if I just do some sort of quick erratic scribbling um, and then start to feather the edit together, together, wow, together, you can sort of see how quickly it's disappearing. Um, and especially at a distance or once you go to print, no one's ever going to notice that that edit is even there. Um, so even just sort of quickly repeating this type of edit once or twice, you can get rid of whole things. Um, and then if you have very obviously repeating elements like this brick and this brick here, uh, refer back to the beginning of the tutorial where maybe you just clone um, another chunk of the photo over top of that. And again, same technique, you would just grab a piece, move it over top of itself, give it a layer mask, and then just sort of beat away those edges so no one can really tell where the edge is. Uh, and throw on some feathering and you can sort of quickly see how everything starts merging together and smoothing out and becoming very hard to detect. Um, it really is just a lifesaver of a technique. Uh, I, I've seen more people struggle with little intricate edits and like getting down to um, almost pixel by pixel corrections when really it's just like aim a lot wider, go for a very vague edit and blur it and it'll be infinitely harder for people to pick up on than if you got really, really prescriptive. So that's the tip. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you want more of these types of tutorials, please check out my channel uh, and be sure to check out some other topics in my essential training series. As always, if you have questions or topics you'd like me to cover, just let me know in the comments. See you next time.